What's up guys? John here from Titan and today I'm doing kind of a serious video. I want to educate you guys on some of the things that maybe you don't know about and today we're going to talk about how to choose the right hormone replacement clinic for your needs. Now there's a lot of different hormone replacement centers out there, there's a lot of different options and a lot of different information. So I kind of want to give you, you know, the fast tutorial on exactly what to look for and maybe some possible red flags so you guys can make an educated decision on who you want to go for for treatment. Now obviously we can help you out as Titan Medical Center, but we recognize that we're not the only people out there in hormone replacement that can do these things for you. There are some other good clinics out there. But on the flip side, there are some other bad clinics out there. So I want to give you this brief tutorial and in-depth look at how you guys can look for these bad clinics or how to look for very, very good ones so you can get the proper treatment that you want. Now, we are talking about your health. So this is kind of important. So I want you guys to pay attention to what I go through. All right. So the first thing you need to do is, is you need to look for a proper medical professional that can service your needs. Now, when we're talking about hormones, we're talking about possibly testosterone replacement therapy. Testosterone is a controlled substance. So with a controlled substance, that medical professional needs to hold a DEA license. This will let him prescribe the controlled substance like testosterone to you for treatment. Now, there is another option for this. It's an ARMP, Advanced Registered Nurse Practitioner, who can also hold a DEA license. They also hold medical licenses. Now, a PA, which is a physician's assistant, does not hold a DEA license. So they cannot prescribe a testosterone and they need a supervising doctor or medical provider to overlook what they're treating the patient or what this patient is supposed to be doing. They're a physician's assistant, okay? So they're not a real medical provider to be able to treat you and go through the regimen and go through all these different things with you. So that's the first thing. And when you do blood work for your hormones, you should really meet with a medical doctor at least the first time. And when I say meet with a medical doctor, that's at least doing a face-to-face, -face, a video conference. Now, if you're in a crowded group, right, and you can't even pick out your medical doctor just prescribing these uh, controlled substances like testosterone or, or these things that can really affect your health one way or another, I mean, that's kind of make you scratch your head. Now, there are obviously people that just want to go to places that want to get their things, but the majority of people are worried about their health and they want to make sure that they're taken care of properly. So that is the first thing. Meet with a medical doctor that can go over these different things. Now, there's tons of medical doctors out there. And any medical doctor with a medical license and DE license can possibly treat you. Look at what kind of doctor that is. Are they a general practitioner? Are they an ophthalmologist? So we've covered that. That's the first thing. Get your blood work, get all the proper tests, actually meet with a medical professional so you can identify the individual and the patient-doctor relationship is established. That is essential, right? That's the first thing. The second thing is, is make sure proper follow-ups. So you want to do proper blood testing. Now that could be for a number of different reasons, like estrogen levels being off, you know, on your, on your start of your treatment. It could be up, down. You want to make sure that it's tested and tuned and tweaked so it is perfect for you as far as you getting the optimal results and no negative side effects. That's the first thing. You also want to check different things like red blood cell count, hemoglobin hematocrit, make sure the blood's not getting thick. So you want to do proper lab work. Now monitoring the lab work every three, six months at least, right? Maybe even more depending on the individual. At that point, you know you're covered. The medical professional should be looking over this and at that point, every six months at least, you should be meeting back with them. They should be going over your regimen. You should be honest with them. How your regimen is affecting you. How is your health doing? How good are you feeling? And if you're not feeling good, they should change up that regimen and help you out. If you're not doing that, you're doing disservice to yourself. So really think about what you're doing, okay? So we've, we've covered that. So we've covered, you know, getting the blood test, meeting with the medical professional, the proper medical professional, right? Doing the monitoring of the blood test to make sure that your body is working optimally, everything's in check. The next thing is, is progressing. So at that point, you want to progress. Now, hormones can only do so much. So you want to look at the different things like diet, obviously, exercise. You want to look at sleep and make sure all these things are proper. If they're not proper, you can do dis different supplementations like amino acid injectables, vitamin injectables. If liver functions are up from maybe an oral supplement of some sort, maybe a fatty diet, you can bring down those levels naturally with glutathione injectables. So, these practitioners and medical providers should be offering these different options to benefit your health to give you a better quality of life 
and that's what it should be after. It's not putting a whole bunch of anabolics and androgens down your throat to get you aesthetically right, but the insides are crumbling. You should be healthy from the inside out. And I promise you, aesthetics will come afterwards. So that's very, very important that you're looking at these different natural things that could possibly get you these results instead of really damage your body. And remember, you gotta be on this planet for a long, long time, hopefully, right? You wanna take care of that body because it's taking care of you. And if it breaks down, you're gonna break down and you're not gonna be able to do anything. So these are kind of some of the things you should be looking for. Now, when you actually get prescribed medication, I'm gonna give you guys some insight on this. And if it's coming from a hormone replacement center, it's probably coming from a compounding pharmacy. Now, there's two types of different compounding pharmacies. There's a 503A, that's a patient-specific compounding pharmacy. And there's a 503B, right? That's an outsourced facility for the FDA so they can produce medications. So it's an FDA outsourcing facility. What they do is they can compound medications for in-office use. That means that a doctor can prescribe uh, testosterone in one shot in office and give the injection in office. They're not supposed to be for resale from a 503B. They're supposed to be for in-office use, right? And the way that you can really look at this, and I'll, I'll show you both, right? So with a 503A and it's patient specific, and I'm gonna use mine, right? You're gonna, this is what you should look for. On the outside, you should get a vial, and the vials and all your medications should be coming from the pharmacy. So if they're not coming from pharmacy, that's red flag number one. If it's coming from somebody personal, Johnny, Pete, whoever, right? Even if it's from the business address, watch out, just check. It should have the pharmacy's name, it should have your name, RX number, that pharmacy's location, right? The lot number, because the lot number is important. And I'll get to that with best use date afterwards and the prescribing doctor and so on and who filled this medication. That way they can trace this back they can trace it back to whoever filled it. They can trace it back to the lot. Now the lot's important because if something happens like an infection outbreak, they know if they have that lot number, they can trace it back to that lot and contact every single patient that that possibly could happen to. So that is the first thing you should be seeing on the label of the outside of the vial. It should not say Titan Medical Center or any other hormone replacement therapy center on the outside of their bottle. I don't care if they say they have a dispensing license or not. It should not be like that. This stuff should be from the pharmacy and that child should come from a 503A, okay? Now, the next thing you look at on this is, and this is fresh, brand new, is now I have the compound pharmacy's name, I have the dosage of the medication in here, the best use date, right, the batch number that it comes from, and so on. It does not say the patient's name on it. The reason is they make a lot of these vials like 150, maybe 200 at a time. And what happens is these compounding pharmacies, they have to, they have to do endotoxin testing and, and, and sterility testing and stuff like that. And at that point, they need to get the results before they can release that lot. And at that point, that's when your information goes on the outside of the vial and so on. So that's what you need to look for. Now, here's another thing that you can do to check the medication to make sure it's right. That thing is, is you can actually call that pharmacy and verify that you are in their system as a patient at that pharmacy. And you know that that medication has came from that pharmacy. It's real, it's a US licensed compounding pharmacy. If you cannot get an answer of where your medication came from, that is flag number two. Watch out. They can't just print it from like, we have like, a, you know, there's an electronical medical record program, uh, like. Uh, Fusion or Dr. Chrono and all the medications are in there, but you input them on that side inside the office, right? Well, the pharmacy actually has it on file and they know. Now, here's another thing. If it's a controlled substance like testosterone or oxandrolone, which is Anavar or Decanandrolone or whatever may be controlled. Now, that is an E4 system and that can be looked up by the DEA, by doctors, by pharmacies. So you're registered and you're getting tracked. Okay, so they know if people are doctor shopping, if you got these controlled substances, and they did it because of the opiate outbreak. It was a huge thing. So that's why they did it. Fortunately for us, we can check and make sure people are not doctor shopping, and you can make sure that you're getting the proper medication that you were supposed to get, because you're paying for this medication probably, right? And probably a good amount of money. All right, so we've covered the 503A. There's another 503A bottle. These are capsules. You're not gonna see no label or name on the inside of those capsules, right? So it should be out on the outside of this vial and you should see all the information, you know, from the pharmacy, the date it was filled, the RX number, the prescribing doctor, and so on and so on. And that's another question. Have you seen your prescribing doctor? Mm -hmm. oh, that's kind of scary. All right, so that's 503A. Now, 503B. 
Here's one 503B, this is a manufactured product by the 503B. Now, you'll see their name on the outside because they manufactured the product, right? Even if this gets dispensed to a, a clinic that has a dispensing license, it still has the pharmacy's name on the outside and it will have some different things on here that you can look for. The biggest thing that you, you can look for in these bottles is, it says for office use only, not for resale. So you know that a 503B is sending these medications to these clinics so they're not to be reselling these, but they can sell the injections. So they can sell the injections singly, all right? But they cannot sell you the vial. If they sell you this vial, it's illegal. So at that point, you guys can look for that red flag. So if they say it's a 503B, you know that 503Bs are usually for an office use and you should be getting that medication. And look at the vial. And if you're not seeing the pharmacy's name and all that, and the biggest thing that I look at on some of these things, it's a lot, and then this is crazy. At the bottom it says, you know, instead of the pharmacy's name, it'll say this is an FDA registered outsourcing facility on the bottom there. So at that point, if there's a problem with your medication, you don't call the pharmacy, you call the FDA. So, uh, you know, there's, there's certain things you guys should be looking for. And it's very important. The reason I tell you this is because these are sterile injectables. They are tested. Some things, if they're not coming from US licensed pharmacies, are not tested. You're taking black market, basically. Why? You're supposed to be going to a clinic that's supposed to be taking care of you and worrying about your health. So make sure that you're looking for these steps. I, I thought that maybe you know me covering this with you guys would help you guys. It's a knowledgeable thing. I'm not trying to promote Titan on this. I'm promoting health. I want to make sure nobody gets hurt out there. So take it for what it is. I hope it's some good information. Please share this, guys. If you guys want, check out our YouTube, Titan Medical Center. You can also check out our Facebook, Instagram. Guys, we're here to help you. Please let us help you. Titan Medical Center, thank you very much.